Okay, today's video, we're gonna talk about how to actually spy on your competitor's banner ads totally for free. Normally, you need software that runs somewhere around 300 bucks a month to be able to see what banner ads that your competition is using to acquire new customers or to get a higher conversion rate on the customers that they've already had on their site, i.e. through remarketing. But Google's released a brand new free way in order to measure or monitor, should, uh, I should say, uh, who's advertising on Google Display Network and see what banner ads they're running itself, as well as responsive display ads as well. And um, so, you know, with that, you with the information, free information that Google's giving you, you can learn how to run Google Display Network ads. Of course, you could also learn how to run basically Facebook ads a little bit better, uh, programmatic ads uh, if you're into doing that, which I've had videos about how to do programmatic advertising that really works and where it really comes in useful. You can search my channel for that. But in short, um, you know, Google Display Network, as I mentioned, that, that's the big one that most of you guys should be using anyway, unless you're in a, like a prohibited or fringe category uh, and, and in terms of the skill level needed to do it and use it. Google Display Network, once you've actually got all the customers you can profitably on Google Search, Google Display, Google Display Network is a great secondary way to start leveraging how much sales you can get online. Of course, assuming you've done Facebook ads, you've done a little Amazon ads if you're a product seller. Um, and it takes more skill level to certainly make that work, but it's explosive if you can get it to work. And where you can get it to work, starts with knowing what offers to use. What offers to use? The best place to start thinking about that is looking at what competition is doing with their banner ads and just trying to copy them. So that's what this video is about and therefore this is also going to tie into that and show you how to actually copy them. Put together a display campaign that will get you some results through running banner ads for your own company. Copying from what the competitor is doing. So with that all said, I'll go through how this works, how you can actually steal your, your competitor's banner ad campaign and use it for yourself, and uh, of which how I use this actual tool that Google is giving out for free for us to be able to do it to your, you know, basically, basically to the full advantage as, as possible. That said, okay, we'll get into the content. I have mentioned before on this channel that you can literally spy already on your com com uh, competitors Google display advertising or pragmatic ads if you're doing that which if you guys don't know what that is I'll just quickly say pragmatic ads are basically um, ad networks out there where you can run your traditional banner ads but uh, instead of you know through Google display network which it's similar to that if you are familiar with that already um, where you can actually target uh, it's about um, specific types of targeting that you can't d get done otherwise. Like they'll have some pragmatic ad networks that'll let you target anybody who's been to your competitors' locations in your city and just them and only them. A or somebody who's been to your, just your location uh, and vice versa of that. Or you, that'll let you target uh, anybody who, you know, basically goes to uh, any coffee shop. So that, you know, that would be similar to what I just said, but if you're not another coffee shop, that wouldn't be a competitor or, or somebody who uh, essentially likes that does DIY stuff. And whereas you can do this kind of stuff on Google Display Network too, but uh, they're just, um, you know, individual micro targeting that you can do that you, that you may not be able to necessarily do through Google Display Network. If you can't do it through Google Display Network and it's really niche Somebody will, and it's a demand and would be highly useful to certain industries to be able to target people a certain ways. You should be able to, you should be able to do Google, uh, find a pragmatic ad network out there that specializes in it. The other thing that's big is pragmatic ad networks are, they specialize in categories that Google will not let you run display ads with or, uh, or um, in that industry, such as cannabis or firearms. There will be a firearm specific pragmatic ad network that you can run those ads. Um, but the main, you know, kind of situations are, like I mentioned, uh, specifically targeting people geographically uh, based upon where they've been or prox in, by using proximity sensors and so forth. 
um, or IP uh, address networks, uh, targeting people that were in specific ways the Google Display, Display Network will not let you target uh, specifically, and things that you can't, uh, categories where you just can't advertise on at all on Google Display Network. If you can target on Google Display Network, it's just easier to do it there for the most part because it's an easier interface. Um, Google's trusted, they have better anti-fraud measures and so forth, but I won't get into all the details on that. You can watch my other videos about pragmatic advertisers if you're curious about that. But anyway, um, basically you can caught or monitor or slash spy on your Google Display Network, your competitor's Google Display Network ads, as well as the pragmatic ads if they're running them using a software called What Runs Where. That's actually the literal name of the software, What Runs Where, funny name. But that'll actually sh not only show you what banner ads your com competition's running, therefore not only the, you can see what banner ad designs are, are specifically working, because like landing pages, what the magic that gets ads to work many times is not even just the messaging, but the layout, how you lay things out on a landing page, literally is just as much or more important than the message itself, because if it's not laid out in an easy to digest format or in a, in a format that gets your attention quickly and has trust, None of the message won't be, you know, it won't come across or won't be read or won't be trusted. Same thing with the banner ads. So it'll show you the how to make a banner ad that squeezes. And with banner ads, obviously, you're, it's always hard to squeeze in a good message in a small space. So you have all that. And then it also, of course, tell you what to say. And then usually a good banner ad, as I mentioned on this channel many times, has an offer on it. Just saying you sell baseball bats is usually not nearly good enough to make a sale profitably on Google Display Network or on pragmatic ads or whatever you're doing to run banner ads. Uh, saying we have banner ads, uh, a flash banner, a uh, flash baseball bat sale going on this weekend only in Denver, targeted at people that are in Denver who already, you know, are looking into buying a baseball bat and and on a baseball team. Now we're talking you know, A, the targeting's on point and it seems relevant, but the, there's an actual offer there that gets the user to want to take action now. Without a, a specific offer, there's no reason to act with that banner ad. And whereas a lot of markets, like if you were selling Oreo cookies, it might be good, certainly good enough just to have them stay on top, uh, top of mind of people, uh, on t at the top of people's minds about your cookies so that when they go to the grocery store next time, they remember to, and want to buy yours. Most of you guys that are small businesses also need somebody to click there and do something now. A, so we can measure it and know that it's working so we can then potentially use that information to scale. But B, just to be able to get the full ROI enough to pay for the cost of the ads to actually scale. So anyway, you can find out what through what runs where, the design of the ad, the look of the ad, what to set, the messaging on the ad, the offer that's being offered on the ad. Get all that. Uh, and steal that from your competition. But uh, not only do they show you what ads your competition's running, but they'll also show how often those ads are running and where they're running. And so, um, specifically with that, you know, basically that'll tell you, you know, give you a better at least inclination as to whether or not that that ad, that offer that's on that ad, is working or not. Stuff that runs runs longer term has a higher statistical likelihood of working. And, and that's just basically how it is. Uh, particularly in the same thing in terms of the proportion of the ads. Do they have a bunch of ads, but clearly one ad's run more than another, another ad that the that particular company's running? Because usually companies more, run more than one. Then you know that that ad's probably the one that's more likely to work, and that's the one that's more likely to copy. If they're just running one ad, well, that's probably, and they've been running it for a long time, maybe that, that's an even, certainly it couldn't be a, even a higher indication that, that ad makes that person money. So anyway, the what runs where uh, software is expensive. You're usually not going to be able to uh, justify a $300 a month fee unless you're going to seriously get into doing display advertising for your company and want to really get serious about, yeah, you know, expanding on your search ads and your Facebook ads and stuff like that that you're running already. By the way, as a side note, native ads. There's native ad spy tools as well. Facebook ads, there's not a uh, Facebook spy tool uh, out there. The ones that do pop up, they're usually, they get cut off from Facebook pretty easily. So um, 
what you do is you take the information you get from what one's rare and try to work that because usually if you find an offer that works to a certain type of audience it'll work on all the platforms it'll work on google display network it'll work on facebook it'll work on linkedin you tar if you're targeting the same person but they're just on different sites the message sh can be the same and work similarly so even though a facebook tool that you know a, sp a facebook spy tool that doesn't exist you can use this what runs where to know basically the general idea of what to do on Facebook, even though it's going to be formatted totally different due to Facebook has its own, you know, you're in the news feed there. It's a totally different concept there and format and, and what you need to communicate with your user differently. We'll just say that. Anyway, with that, if you're not there, there is actually a secondary way to copy the banner ads. You may not be able to know how often they run and where they run, but at least you'll know what banner you know, A, is your competition running banner ads? So I know, does display network work in my market? Which, even if they're not running display ads, banner ads can certainly work in your market anyway, because most of the time, your competition, particularly in smaller niches, you're not, they're not even going to be running banner ads because everybody thinks that the banner ads, for the most part, either have to get a good re as good a return as the search ads or they're not going to do it or it's just too complicated for them to be able to get the targeting right. And it's not as e nearly as easy to set up. It takes a little bit of skill, a little bit of research to get it done right physically. So in smaller niches, people can't even figure it out. And so th th that sure, certainly uh, uh, should not mean at all that you shouldn't try it. You just have to watch my videos about display ads, perhaps read my book about display advertising. I'm the best uh, author on this topic. You can find my book on Amazon uh, on this topic of display advertising specifically like with Google Display Network ads, uh, but they don't go ahead and do this research and there's not very much information that's good, that's actually good about display advertising out there to read, so they just don't do it. So, But in the situations where you do see someone running a banner ad, that at that point it should tell you even more that this is really working given that most people have str a struggle to know how to do it right. So their half-assed attempt, in other words, uh, if that's actually, you know, working a, uh, for a long time, or you just see them using it at all, it's a high, that much more likely that you should be doing that kind of thing too. But you can do uh, this other way to just see if your competition's running banner ads. Um, if all you need to do is to spy on your competitors' ads to get ideas of how to run, put together your own display network, uh, 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 display network advertising campaign. Uh, whether you're doing remarketing, which I mentioned on this channel many, many times, uh, even if, despite what you think about display ads and them not getting quite the return uh, your search ads have, you do remarketing to get the initial click that you use to get to pe people to the site that, you know, that a lot of times can cost, you know, two, three, five, ten, twenty dollars a click to get that to convert at a higher rate because you show your testimonials or reviews, that type of thing in your remarketing that shows up for people after they've been to that page and you do it a few times it costs a penny to have an ad show up for somebody after they've been to your site like that to see a testimonial to see a review and you show them a few reviews like that and it makes it more statistically likely they're going to do business with you because they saw that ad after you have paid to get them you know sometimes up to 10 bucks a click to get them to your site in the first place it makes the overall roi potential on a set amount of budget better than if you just marketed it to everybody once, and if they didn't buy right away, basically fuck them. That, and that's what most people are gonna think and do. You do remarketing, you're gonna get more out of a set amount of budget through you know, advertising than you would, you know, obviously, like I said, advertising to everybody once. Um, and respectively, as far as the first click, and going on a tangent here again, the first click, if you're gonna prospect and go after new people who've never heard or seen of you on using display ads on Google. People don't do them a lot of times because the returns so-called not, you know, so to say not very good, uh, not as good as their search ads or just not as good in general. A, because generally, like I said, they're not usually educated enough to know the, you know, the, what are the ingredients that makes a good display advertising campaign work in terms of the targeting and having a good offer, all of that. But also a lot of times people will see the ad and they're not gonna act on it right away. They're gonna see it, think it's an interesting thing, click on it, go to your page, thought it was interesting, they're gonna buy two weeks from now. And when they, because uh, it's different than search ads. With a search ad, they're ready to buy now. With a display ad, they're not. And so they people generally think, and this shows up in the tracking, 
that the return isn't as good, they shouldn't do it. I'll tell you for a absolute fact that people that you advertise in, in such a way where they click on your ad and get to your page, and then a lot of times, most of the people aren't gonna buy right away. The tracking's not gonna show you the people that come back a month later very well to come back and buy. Even though the tracking's supposed to do that, the cookie-based tracking, it's not very reliable. It's gonna show you 20% of the people that you've influenced to get them to buy later on. And so you can't, the, the tracking that kind of Google provides for you out of the box for tracking those kind of people that you know are the perfect prospect for your product or service, and that if you just, they came, became aware of it, they would buy. Uh, generally speaking, if they're not gonna buy instantly, which that's rare that you have a product or service that good where they're gonna be reading an article, see a banner ad, and then see it, click on it, and then buy right away. Just, you know, you need to measure it the other way, which is you to start doing the banner ad advertising, and then you see if your overall sales go up over the next three to six months. And that is a better way of telling if the banner ads will work. Just as a side kind of, to, that was the, that's the main things that you need to know about like Google Display Network. Research about targeting and the offer. Those are the two things that you have to get right and people don't really do right to get it to work. And then even then, the tracking is not gonna show all your sales. So respectively, if every single person in your market saw your banner ad, got to your landing page that were considering a product, your sales are gonna grow. So you look at your overall sales growth, not the targeting or not the tracking in your account. Just wanted you to know that. Beyond that, going back to the uh, lesson at hand here, if all you're trying to do is just see the ads themselves and what are the what's the offer on the ads to copy from your competitors, uh, you don't need the what runs where. Google has a way for you to see your competitors' banner ads. Uh, all you have to do is just Google some keywords that match your niche. So if you're selling baseball bats, going to that previous example again, you simple, simply Google like baseball bats for sale or whatever. And then with the ads that show up at the top of Google, I know this is search ads, but they'll show you display ads this way. Next to the ad where it shows there's literally three uh, vertical dots right next to the ad, you click on that. And then you click see more ads from the pop-up screen that comes up after you clicked on the three dots. And that is that, from there, you're gonna get another pop-up, if you will, that's gonna show you all the search ads that that person's been running over time, as well as the banner ads. If there's no banner ads in there, they're not running banner ads. If there are, obviously, you know they're running banner ads now. Um, but this only technically works if, as a disclaimer here, asterisk my marker doesn't work very well uh this only works if the advertiser verification is done by that particular competitor otherwise you click the three dots they're not going to have the link see more ads pop up for you there so very important to know that uh, but you know obviously some of your competitors will have the advertiser verification some won't and so you'll obviously be able to get some data of course it's free get what you get but generally you'll have enough data to get you started trying to get that display ads campaign going and certainly way better than having no data and just starting out your display campaign program with nothing. So, and obviously you may not, and uh, may not be up for spending the 300 a month right away uh, with that. So, but you know, with that, the advertiser verification is just something that Google has that where you upload your like ID and stuff and they ask you for that at some point once you become a bigger advertiser. So if you're looking at smaller competitors that maybe only make a few hundred thousand a year in gross sales uh, revenue, they may not certainly have done that advertiser verification because their ad account, ad account may only be uh, spending like a thousand a month in ad spend and that at that point Google probably haven't asked them for it. Whereas if they spend 10 grand a month, more than likely they are going to be asked to be to verify their account through uploading their ID and so forth. And then therefore at that point, when you see their search ad, they're gonna have the option to see all the other ads by clicking on the three dots and then clicking see more ads. So that's specifically the method to get, see your competitor's banner ads. Of course, as a side here, you could see their search ads, but could that compared to using something like SpyFu, which for totally for free, you can get an account at SpyFu and see all your competition's uh, search ads for the most part. It won't show you all their search ads for all their keywords unless you pay their $33 a month. But you know, $33 a month, if you're serious about you know doing PPC, that's, not, that's really nothing. So, and even then, 
you know, what information Google provides and what Spyfu provides for free, Spyfu's free offer is going to be better than what you find in the see more ads uh, link that I'm talking about here for the most part. But the banner ads, on the other hand, Obviously, you're not getting that unless you're spending 300 a month of that uh, What Runs Where because there's no trial on What Runs Where. You either have to pay for it to see the information or you don't. And uh, there are some, by the way, other advertising spy, uh, banner ad spy tools other than What Runs Where, but they pretty much all suck. It's really hard to actually scan the internet and find all the people's banner ads and then archive that information. It's not cheap to do that. It's a lot different than going on the Google search and finding the ads because you know where those ads are. The banner ads, there's millions and millions of web pages out there. So that's why they have to charge so much money. Beyond that though, um, so that's the method to find the banner ads. So if you're going to run, you try to do display ads, I would look at as many comp competitors, both direct and indirect competitors ads as I can and just start taking notes. What kind of ads, out of all the ads you see, what kind of ads seem like they you know, there's trending and the stuff that people are doing and then the offers and just start doing some research and then writing down the type of offers that you see. And then just, you know, it makes a lot more sense to just copy that, you know, what offer that they're using that seems like works a lot than just to randomly come up with your own, at least at first. So and as far as that goes, my strategy that I'm going to be doing, if I'm going to start out in a new market to do display ads, uh, Specifically where we're doing prospecting, looking and having that ad show up for somebody who's never seen or heard of our company before. As far as remarketing, it's a totally different thing. I have a general formula for that. Testimonial, they see, they see an ad with a testimonial on it one day. The next day they see an ad with a review like uh, on it, like our average reviews from Google. The next day they see another ad with another testimonial on it. The next day they see an ad that says why we're better than the competition. And there's just a general formula. It's stuff that you would normally say in a sales conversation with a prospect about to get them to want to buy. Um, you should buy from us because of this and this and this and this. And you wrap that up into individual banner ads that show up for a person for the next few days while they're mulling over who they're going to do business with so that they ultimately come out going with you the day that they eventually decide today's the day I'm going to buy you come up first. Uh, you're the first person they think of and then you get the sale because you followed up with them with these banner ads and your competition thought it was stupid because when they ran their banner ads and they didn't see very many people click that banner ad and immediately purchase. That's not what the remarketing banner ad is about. The remarketing banner ad is there to literally basically be used as a propaganda tool to make sure that when they eventually decide who they're going to do business with two weeks from now when they get paid, you are the first person they think they're going to do business with because of the, the you've drilled your name into your head or their head. And uh, that's how psychology works. It's similar to how political campaigns work. You see those stupid ass yard signs that the politicians, you know, litter on all the street corners and everything else. They say nothing about, the, you know, that person's position or anything else. You don't even have to have a good position to be elected as a politician anymore. You just need to slam your name out there. And if people hear your brand, your name enough times when they go to the voting booth and they have to decide which one they're going to vote for, they just go with the one that they, they can, they, that sounds the most familiar. And that's why they do it. This remarketing sequence that I'm talking about, the, the strategy we use on every single client's campaigns to get the full amount of ROI possible from a market and from a set budget, it's the same exact reason. We're spoon feeding them all the information, of course, that they need to know to make a good decision. But as a part of that, we, the, because the user, when they go to buy, thinks of us first because we've been so repetitive with our name there and, and getting in front of them, they also think because they thought of us first, we're the most authoritative company. Therefore, most people are going to want to just buy from the most authoritative company in the space. We've artificially created, even if we aren't the authority in the space, we are now thought of as the authority. So anyway, but that's remarketing. As far as getting in front of somebody who's never heard from you, it's a totally, totally different approach in terms of the ads. You have a strong offer. You got to target it well. And I'm looking at all the, like I said, direct and indirect competitors even to find out which ad offers work for this type of product and this type of space. If I'm a local company offering like a local service or even if I have a local like brick and mortar store to I sell products out of, I'm going to look at all the other people, first of all, obviously in my local market, but in local markets, 
you know, people with small companies and small head budgets, they usually don't do display because it's too difficult. And there's all these biases against it, like I said. People try it for a little bit, they didn't know what they were doing, it didn't work, and then therefore they're not doing it. And so what you'll often have to do then, or be forced to do, is to go to other bigger cities, perhaps, where people have more money to spend on display ads, or in general, just go around the country. Go and look at the top 20 cities and all the other people that do what you do in those cities. So if you're a plumber, you go look at the top 20 cities by population, all the plumber campaigns in all those cities, and then see who's running banner ads from there. And then once you went to that extent, you'll find some people running banner ads somewhere in the country. And then you could see, you know, these, you know, more pro advertising people uh, that, you know, a lot of these companies, the CEOs sometimes they're just really good at, at marketing and then they'll be the ones that run the display ads because they can naturally pick up how to make it work and then you can just steal from that person essentially or at least see what they in general what they figured out spent money to figure out how, you know how to get it to work and like I said it doesn't tell you how long they've been running it but there's a, the more higher or higher percentage of a certain ad and a certain offer that's you, that you see there that Google gives you the more likely that it is to work and obviously, if you can find that being done or some, something similar being done in other markets, then you know that's probably the thing to go with. Uh, similar to how, you know, to give you an equivalent of this, in the real estate market, one thing I see in that market, even though we're not, we've dabbled in that market, we haven't done display ads heavily in that market uh, too much, but the first thing I noticed in that market doing this kind of research was everybody's saying, you know, find out what your house is worth. That seems to be the universal thing that everybody's kind of figured out that you put as far as an offer to get someone's attention in an ad to a new prospect. People want to know what their house is worth. Once you've got that, then you know you that if that if they're asking that that person's uh, at least open to uh, selling their house. So as a real estate agent, that is my lead, and it's a, that's the most efficient way. Even though that's not somebody who says they're looking to sell their house, that's it cheapest way to get a banner ad in front of somebody and get them to respond. So instead of having to do all this crazy stuff to test all these different offers, why not just go with that one? And that's what you're trying to do essentially with this for your local company. If you're a national company or a national player product, selling products or services nationally, what I'm gonna do is I'm of course gonna look at all the competition in my space, obviously. But beyond that, or once you get past that, I'm going to look at all of the other niches in the category as well. So uh, specifically, what I'm going to do, what I did before when I was selling uh, auto parts for companies, uh, e-commerce shops that I was part owner in, I would do, um, you know, we, if we were selling an air intake uh, uh, system itself, the air intake system that we did, we wouldn't just look at all the other people that are selling uh, a company selling an air intake system like us, we would sell any um, co companies that sold any uh, product that was supposed to, that are meant to bring air into the engine quicker, whether that's uh, turbochargers, superchargers, uh, instead of like a cold air intake that we were selling. And just look at what they're doing. If you were to bring this into like a, your home goods, let's say you were selling uh, blinds, uh, you would find out what other people are doing to run banner ads and have their to have an offer for that that's going to work for their blinds company. I would go ahead and look at the same thing for people selling uh, lamps and you know other you know like knickknacks inside the house, potentially like furniture and that kind of thing. Just look at the whole category specifically, the whole category and uh, see what people in the category are doing so that maybe you'll get lucky. Maybe in your industry, there's a lot of people running banner ads. A lot of you guys aren't gonna get so lucky and you're gonna have to look at your general category. Automotive, home goods, obviously legal. If you're a lawyer, just look at what other lawyers and other niches. Uh, if you're a divorce lawyer, maybe look at what the pr uh, personal injury space is doing. Even though it's such a different uh, area of law, so even though it's a different area of law, that personal uh, injury space, uh, personal personal injury law space, they're spending just tons and tons of money to do lead generation in that space. And there's tons of people running display ads. Well, they they'll do any kind of advertising because they're making so much money, and it's all predicated on lead generation. 
that are doing bus ads and uh, you know um, billboards and everything else. And that's you might have to just go there in order to find out what kind of banner ads work in the legal space to get leads for your divorce law, uh, divorce law um, company. And for that matter, divorce law is a big enough niche that you should be able to have ads. But you get the general point. You look to the closest, you try to go within your category you, and get as close to the same product as you have or same service as you have to get the ideas. And for the most part, if, in the automotive space, for us, getting other, peop, other ads that other people were running in the automotive space that was meant to make the car faster, That's because that's what the parts we were selling were also supposed to do, basically we're providing us just as good of information as somebody who's selling the exact part product or part that we sold and we sold you know more than one part but you get the general idea so a lot of times just because other people in your niche doing it that aren't doing uh, banner ads that, and you can't find any banner ads in your niche it really isn't relevant you just need other people who are running ads and then copy from them that are in your general category some obviously people don't have a category yet that you know they'll look at or look into but I'm just letting you guys know and I'm trying to help as many of you guys as I can here uh, work around you know using this tool and using it to the, your best advantage so but anyway that's in general what you do once you find some ads that look like other people in your either in your niche exactly or your, your category itself like I was talking about or in a different local market that's a, a different city you copy that ad design set, take that ad send it to your designer say just make the ad pretty much, you know, use the use it as inspiration. Technically, you can't use the exact design because that would be copyright. But for the most part, even, you know, with a banner ad, nobody else is going to find that. So even if you did copy it literally, directly, nobody was nobody would ever catch on to it. So basically with that, <clears throat> then that you copy the design pretty much, if you will, copy the offer. And then you're just stuck. All you got left then is just to how to get the targeting right, right? And uh, for that, you generally have to go into figuring out what it is, what is it that your customer, what are the traits that make that customer unique so that you can narrow down out of the, you know, 100 million people you can target through Google Display Network to find where the real buyers are at. You know, obviously there's 10,000 people that would buy your product. How can you narrow down enough to where you're just marketing to the 10,000? That's your whole goal with the Google Display Ads to get it to work. And most people who don't get it to work aren't thinking that way. They're thinking, oh, if I have this ad show up for all men, that some of them will want to buy my car parts. And that's a really, really idiotic way of thinking about doing this. You want to do something like, you know, basically if you sell granite countertops installation locally, you want to find out, you know, of course, what makes what what are the most sure buyers, and this is one where we actually did got results in this market doing display ads to new prospecting or new through, through prospecting, not remarketing. We found out people that are looking to move into a new house are the most sure buyers. If they're already looking to getting granite countertops and they're looking to buy a new house as well, those people are about as sure as, as of a bet as it gets in terms of marketing to those people. So we created a Google Display Network audience, which you can do this, you can do it through combined segments. M person must be looking to move. They must be looking at houses and they have looked for a granite countertop installer in the last 30 days or so. They've Googled it, Count granite countertop installation, granite countertop installer, granite countertop contractors. And then on top of that, they are within our geographic territory, which is the other thing that people sometimes know about display ads. They can just run to a tiny little pocket or area where you're at locally if you need to. But anyway, with that, out of the 100 million people, we got to really narrow down to the you know 10,000 people, the 10,000 people that is worth marketing to. If you can narrow down your targeting enough to where you get to basically all buyers, the display ads are going to work because the cost of running the ads at that point will be irrelevant. It's just like saying, you know, the per in your business, the person that would basically always buy, if you could get a thousand people into a room like that so you could talk to them all, what would you pay? Well, this is the same thing as this. It's a good analogy, you know, to, to, 
to give for this. You're, how can you use, and Google, you can target people any which way, there's thousands and thousands of ways to target. And then when you combine that when you, with, you can say they must be this and this and this and this, and if they're not, I don't want them to see my ad. You can see how this can you know, work if you just put your mind into it and figure out what makes your best customer totally unique and different than other people, uh, most other people, if you will, not all, but most. And then, so that, that's the targeting component. You tar target the people the right, and that targeting part is the hardest part. If you get in front of the, the perfect people, even if you don't have an amazing ad and an amazing offer, it'll just work. You can have an amazing ad and offer, but the targeting sucks, you'll never make money. So when you've got the competitor's ad and type of an offer that works in your general category, you pair that with the targeting like I talked about, figuring out and researching your best, most you know, serious buyer, now you can start to make money. So anyway, that's in a general, that's like the 101 of Google Display Network advertising. Uh, if you're gonna do pragmatic ad, you know, ads, because you, know, you can't find that perfect medley of traits that make a person so likely to buy on Google Display Network, the cost of you know, having, you know, have, having it cost a penny to have your ad show up for that person, because that's what it costs, or in other words, it costs like eight bucks to have a, your ad show up a thousand times on Google Display Network, that's about what it is. If you can't find that perfect medley of traits that make a person that's you know, really, really likely to buy, and what you know if you got in front of them, you're willing to pay tons of money to get in front of them, you, you go to explore you know, other pragmatic ad networks, and maybe they have that perfect you know, uh, set of traits, if you will people who are a part of soccer leagues, which you can't maybe get done through Google Display Network, but there's a pragmatic ad network that lets you get in front of all soccer players that are in all soccer leagues. Because that's the type of thing you can do with pragmatic ad networks, like I was mentioning before. So, and, um, but that's pretty much it. You know, once you get, uh, you know, even a little bit of success with Google's, Google Display Network, it gets really exciting because it's hard to do, but the upside is there's way more potential with it because Google Display Network gets you on millions of different websites potentially. Uh, if the person's online at all, you'll be able to get in front of them with Google Display Network. On Facebook, yeah, that's nice, but if they're not on Facebook, you can't get in front of them. So uh, respectively, there's a lot, a lot of potential there. And uh, so, um, and as a last thing about that, if, if you want, so you could take the easier route. The, the easiest thing to do, which doesn't obviously have anything to do with what I, um, was, what I was talking about today, but the easiest thing to do with Google Display Network is to target your competitors. You make a custom intent audience, is what it's called, in which you can basically create an audience that's revolving around people who, are look, who have searched for or been on your competitor's site in the last 30 days. And you can have an ad that says, why go with, XYZ, we're much, much better. And then drive that traffic directly to your site. Because obviously, if you know, if somebody's been to your competitor's site already that directly competes with you, you know, that's worth gold to your business. And then, you know, it works extremely well. Generally, all only will do it is uh, if I can have an ad that says, don't go with, you know, them, we're much better, we're three times faster for half the price because you'll get a much better result. But it's so effective that many times, even if we don't have a specialized ad that says why we're better than that specific competitor, we'll just have our ad there and it'll still work extremely good. But uh, you know, you create a custom intent audience to allow you Google to help you get your banner ads in front of those people that have been on your competitor site and it works extremely good. Generally, I would start there before I would get into trying to figure out how to target people who are just interested in products or services that we sell, because uh, it's easier. But you know that that's you know something that I thought I would bring up as well, since this video is about Google Display Network targeting and, ad, and banner ad, uh, banner targeting, banner advertising. But I'll wrap it up with that. Hope you enjoyed this video. I have a lot of other videos on this channel about other PPC money making strategies. If you want to learn how to make a ton of money with PPC. This is the channel you want to subscribe to. I give you the working strategies on this channel that we're testing and verifying either work or don't work 
uh, as we have a few dozen clients and we get to test stuff, we're for, we have to, our job is to test certain things that work and don't work. And then with, and from that, I give to you on a silver platter the stuff that works, stuff that will make you millions of dollars in sales through using PPC for your company if you just follow the stuff that's on an ongoing basis coming out and that I'm telling you works versus doesn't work. And so uh, it's, be it's better, it's got, this channel's got uh, more, better, more actionable advice than any other YouTube channel that you're gonna find on YouTube about how to use these PPC networks and the campaigns and the tools that they have to actually make money with your ads. So that's why I put it together. If you would consider liking it for the algorithm, I'd really appreciate it. Um, uh, like this video for the algorithm. It'll help other people like you find the ad and it'll help us out. Uh, I want to be able to help this channel grow. Beyond that, uh, we also, well, if you have any questions about the content that I shared, leave me a comment below. I get back to every single person who leaves me a comment on this channel, usually within a couple days time. And uh, I have a blog. If you like the content on this channel already, I have a blog at guaranteedppc.com slash blog where I go through, it's a blog that I've written completely myself, where I go through all the different campaign techniques that make money. If you want to learn how to set up campaigns on a more step-by-step -step basis that walks you through it completely, this kind of stuff that I use for our clients to basically guarantee the results, you can find great supplementary information there from myself. Other than, you know, on this channel, we're going high level, the blog, I go into detail on these campaign setups itself. So can be also useful for you as well. As a final note, I have a brand new program that I've released at our PPC agency where we're uh, offering some, you know, companies don't want to have somebody managing their campaigns, but what they do want, similar to like what I was talking about today, they want to know what are the campaigns, the ads and the, ten, you know, landing pages that work for a certain industry, presumably that we've already gotten great results in so that they can buy that information about how they work so they can just use it for their own campaign and then manage it themselves. And we've had companies that, you know, come to us, they're in one industry. I say, you know, you're in a small industry. Why don't you, you're a, uh, let's say you're, a, 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 um, uh, you know, you're doing um, home security installation. It's really competitive. It's tough in your market. You could just do a um, electric. You could do um, home uh, theater installation, and, and it's, that, that's a better market for your uh, for your for your. Comp uh, it's a be better market to be in. It's less competitive for your geographic market. And uh, I can say I've already gotten the results for that specific niche in this other geographic area, this other city here. We're, you know, we're able to make $3 million a year in sales running our campaigns that we set up for another client in another city. Using the, you know, these campaigns, you can use their exact campaigns, get the similar $3 million a year sales results for your company at you know, a 90% um, or uh, you know, 10% margin or whatnot. You can just use the exact campaigns they're using for yourself and start up yourself a different business in a different niche. You can use the same landing page they're using, same campaign templates, and then you're, you've got a turnkey essential business there to run. And we've had people do that several times now, enough to where I started a whole, you know, mention it on this channel. People will, you know, we'll, we have about 50 different niches where we put together great results. And we know the results from, you know, those different niches with the campaign templates we have. and. Somebody will use those campaign templates, landing page templates. They'll buy them for their own, you know, account, use them, and uh, they work so well that they just basically just outsource all the work, take five or ten percent of the revenue as their profit margin, and don't even know anything about the niche. That's what kind of position we could put them in with our campaign templates alone. And we may have a campaign template for you, based upon us doing business and gotten, you know went through all the hard work of optimizing and using all the techniques you see on this channel for your market already for somebody else in another geographic territory that you know basically that you're not in and you could just you know basically get our campaign templates and instead of going through and having to learn all this stuff go right to the part where the results are after you know instead of going through the years of work just use what we already know works we can tell you exactly what the results would be up front and skip all this nonsense of having to work to put your campaigns together. Anyway, if you want to know if we got campaign templates available like that for your market, you can just reach out. 
If you're looking to start up a business based upon a proven working PPC campaign template, uh, in products and services, we have uh, campaign templates like this, let us know. But beyond that, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope to see you in my next video where we have another good PPC strategy for you to make some more money with your ads. See you then.